Hi guys and welcome back to the channel and it's been a while since I sat down in front of a camera to record for a vlog so I might be a bit rusty. Um, it's been about six weeks since we got back to the UK now so probably about um, seven or eight weeks since everything happened um, but in timeline wise um, it was last night that the video went out that explained everything that's been going on. Um, obviously we've not been making videos as such um, certainly not been going around vlogging um, although obviously I've been recording what I've been up to and Mandy's been recording what she's up to um, so this video might seem like it's all over the place um, but essentially it's what I've been recording for possibly um, about a month, five weeks or something like that um, so I've been working on the van there's been a few um, things that I wanted to change from our trip so I've been working on the van, making a few changes, some upgrades and fixing a few things that weren't quite right while we're away as well. Um, so that's pretty much what this video is, just to go over what we've been doing with the van, or what I've been doing with the van, um, and try and explain a bit about why as well. So um, obviously if I'm changing something, what went wrong or what was the need to change it, that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah. Just wanted to give a bit of an intro to this video to explain a bit more about where I've been, why there's been a bit of a pause, and um, roughly what's going to go in this video. Hi, buddy. Hey, good boy. Yes, Cooper's with me at the moment. Oh, being a very good boy, very softy boy, aren't you? Good little tail. Oh, little tail. And a bit of a haircut as well. Going back to last night's video is um, just, um, yeah, I just want to say thank you for all the overwhelming messages of support and love and everything else. Um, yes, it was a very difficult video to make, especially putting it on the internet with lots of um, judgmental characters out there, shall we say. Um, but I think all the love and support absolutely tranched and totally splattered, um, wiped out all the negative comments anyway so yeah screw them guys and um, yes thank you very much for all your lovely messages um, it was a video that we felt we needed to make to be honest to everyone and um, yeah I think everyone got that point and what I'm doing here is making holes and installing vents and what we've noticed is where we installed or where I installed the diesel heater um, it's probably lacking on air for air flow if you like um, obviously combustion wise all that is underneath the van so that's irrelevant um, I'm just on about the fact that it needs to suck in air to blow it out so this is a little storage cupboard underneath the end of one of the beds so that plate there is going to get some little air vents and the shelves one that I've just taken out and that one um, is going to get some air vents as well. So I bought these so the right thickness for this board. And I just push in and lock in place. So under there now are lots of holes. Don't worry about the hole alignment. I'm not. So that's that done. And then there's two there as well. So even when this door's closed, there's still all those air gaps and everything allowed to breathe through there as well. And obviously the bed on top doesn't seal. So um, there's still air gonna be able to flow that way as well. This is uh, my little secret weapon. <laughs> uh, so this is gonna give me um, at least another couple of extra days if the solar is non-existent. Um, give me some battery charge um, or just use it on AC. Uh, whatever I need to do. Um, it's basically uh, kind of epic. <laughs> uh, so it's an EcoFlow Delta Max. Um, it's 2000 watt inverter, over 2000 watt hours of uh, power inside it. Um, obviously you can use it on USB-C, standard USB. And on the back, it's got uh, three pin sockets, four of them as well. Um, I'll just run a little cable through here so that on sunny days I can just hook it up when I'm fully charged in the van and then that'll charge it there. So it's only a little trickle charge as you can see, but enough that you know it charges itself. 
they're just absolutely fantastic these power banks but this one's especially good because I can stow it away in the cupboard there and then when I need its power I can either just lift it out or I can remotely switch it on so it's actually um, connected to the Wi-Fi hotspot of the van and I can switch on whether I need the DC um, or the AC side of things how much power it's uh, consuming uh, I can change the rate of charge I can change the rate of um, you know what sort of power it's giving out as well so that is a game changer because with everything else we've got in the van you know we're talking now an easy couple of weeks off grid without starting the engine or doing anything else with a little bit of solar or an easy week off grid even if we get no solar at all we've added another 100 amp hour lithium battery so we've now got three in there so there are two underneath and then that one laid on top obviously the beauty about lithium is it doesn't matter what the orientation is there's no fluid in there or anything like that to leak um, so as long as they are well protected obviously it's strapped down um, and it's sat on a uh, cushioned layer of foam as well so there's no shock or anything going in there um, yeah there's not a lot of space in there which is why I went for the B2B locations underneath the chair. So that's where my two B2Bs are, hidden underneath there. I'm just about to see the other one at the back. Give it some extra cooling from sitting on top of the inverter, because obviously that's a massive heat sink, which means they'll be cooled down. So yeah, they've been working fine so far in conjunction with each other. So the B2B um, that was in there used to get very very hot which is why I put a vent and a fan in there um, so when I put both of them down there I wanted a way to ensure that they were going to be nice and cool so now as we drive we get well anywhere from sort of um, 55 amps upwards it depends if the fridge is running so more capacity for holding the power so we can sit around for longer and then more power to recharge the batteries as we drive in so it doesn't take as long so yeah, I'm really pleased that's been working out great over the last few weeks. It's one of the first things I did, and I'm really sorry that I didn't record anything. Um, I just wasn't feeling up for it at the time. But um, yeah, as ever, I'm not one of those people that um, wants to show you a neat cupboard with all the wires covered with another piece of wood so you only see the wires coming out the holes or anything like that. Um, I want to show you the fact that, uh, number one, it's safe. Number two, it works for me. It's perfectly, uh, you know, adequate for what we need. Um, and number three, um, you know, yeah, I don't need to worry about all that kind of thing. I don't see it. It's not on show. There's no blue neon light or anything like that for it. Um, I just want a system that works for me. And like I say, it's safe as well. So there we go. I don't know if you can see, but when they chop off the van, <laughs> they might put a lot of insulation on this part of the motorhome, but on this part of the van, they don't do anything, unfortunately. So you can see in there, it is literally just chopped off and then they build everything on top. So there's no insulation basically. So I've bought another roll of the stuff that we used on Mandy's van um, and I'm going to find all these little issues with this van um, and then put some insulation in. All right, I have um, literally stuffed it everywhere I can. Pardon the expression. Down there and all the way inside there, even down into the floor. There we go, all back together. Done the little cover down there as well. Now I did notice that a few of you said you wanted to see me cooking. What do you think I'm going to make? And do you really want step-by-step -step instructions? It wouldn't be right if I didn't show you what I'd made. Ham and cheese toasties. And I may put some brown sauce on there. I may even have a pizza. <laughs> it's amazing. All right then. Today we've got a bit of a facelift going on. So bye bye grill that's all broken and everything else. And hello new grill. Well, it's actually a second hand grill. And I've used some plastic dip paint just to make it black. That's got a few marks and everything on it. 
I'm sure it'll look cool when it's done. Well that was a little bit fiddly because we've got some of the different mounts and things like that in there. But I think that looks loads better. So there we go, mounted in the middle. So it should give a nice um, narrow beam of light straight down the road. There we go, all the new lights on. Don't worry, they don't flicker in real life. It's just the difference in filming rate. Got those, got some fog lamps. Oh yeah. Oh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Hey kid, you need to go drive somewhere. Come on kid, let's get going. So that is the front end done now. New grill, new front end bits, all the lights finished. Whew. Yeah, baby. As you can hear, I've started the steam engine. It's laid down vibrating as he does normally. As soon as we get going, he's all right. Um, yeah, time to head off. So today's been a bit of a first. Went to see Daz today, um, on my own. <laughs> um, went to pick up the parcel that he sent us um, when we were in Turkey um, late in December, so Christmas time. Um, the parcel was refused entry to Turkey, as you know, and then it took all that time to get back from Turkey to the UK and then clearing customs in the UK, and they wanted to charge me 200 and something quid or whatever it was, uh, to then get it um, back to Daz. So yeah, picked up the parcel today, finally. Uh, had a great chat with Daz, bit of a catch up, hearing all his uh, plans, all the stuff he's been up to and what he's gonna plan and stuff like that, really cool. Um, but for now, I'm actually kind of um, playing Daz at his own game right now, actually. Um, our front tyres have done around about 30,000 miles now um, and they are about um, a third left compared to the tread of the rear tyres. Obviously they've done 30,000 miles um, but with being front wheel drive and everywhere we go um, they've worn out fast as well. So uh, I'm currently in Reading at Elite Tyres or Elite Wheels and Tyres. Um, I'm going to pop in in the morning and get two new front tyres put on. So quite a peaceful night really, no issues at all. So we're uh, just waiting for the guys to open up now. It's about 7 a.m. Obviously uh, deliveries have started to arrive and everything, so it's got noisy, so I thought I'd just get up. A nice order, waiting for someone to go out or maybe collect. 31,000 miles in all them countries. So yeah, well done. Good choice. Have fun with them. So let's have a look. What did I wear them down to? I would say they're three and a half millimetres. So still legal. Three mil on that one. Three mil. So what's on the back? Or not, they're still on <laughs> between seven and eight mil. On the alter range, you're going to get a bit more. So they start on 10. 10. Yeah. So after 31,000 miles on the rear, then they're uh, just about kind of scruffed up on the front. They'll do, they'll do as a spare anyway. Yeah, definitely. Epic little sunset at this spot here. Look at the mist across the uh, the grass. A lovely little sunset. Oh, 
Good morning folks, this is a beautiful spot um, and up there behind me yesterday Cooper and I walked up to Belton Tower just about squoze the van in, a little bit of activity last night, not a lot, just kids turning up in the cars and play music, other than that it was just me and the crows for uh, you know a wake up call this morning but I wanted to get up and see the sunrise I thought it was a beautiful landscape to wake up for a bit of sunrise and um, yeah I can't say I've been in the best of moods lately to record things get a camera out it's not been my top priority and it's not been something that I've been eager to do just been kind of cracking on with things so, so I think this is a really good early morning get up and me getting my mojo back doing a bit of filming I'm just adjusting to solo van life and um, yeah what a better way to do it than a morning like this We then had a couple of days off uh, before Mandy and I met up again with our friends Mevy and Dave and Joe and we went to do a little bit of stargazing with a guy called Stargazer Rob. I'll put his uh, Instagram details below if you want to do it but it was a little class we paid for just to learn a bit more about the night sky and it was really cool before setting off on the next day for something that really does make the van stand out and just finishes it off that little bit more. So, in Milton Keynes, getting the graphics sorted out. Let's come for a walk with Coop. Found a nice canal towpath to walk. It's weird lately, it seems to be gravitating towards canals. It's a little bit of road noise, but it's fine. So yeah, can't wait to see what the van looks like with the new graphics on. Gonna look cool. Finishing touches um, of all the external look raids anyway. And a few more things to do inside, lighting and stuff like that. Oh, good morning guys. What a wonderful sleep I had last night, this little lay-by. So I'm out with Drifting Dan. Um, basically he does diddlies, uh, ukuleles um, out of biscuit tins. So he makes the neck and strings and all that kind of stuff. And then out of a biscuit tin or something like that, cigar box, he makes a musical instrument. How cool is that? And uh, yeah, basically we bought them for Mandy. So uh, she's going to learn to play the uke. Um, something to do on her travels. Um, so as I was kind of in the area getting the graphics done on the back, which we'll talk about that in a minute, um, I stopped by last night, pick up the uke and um, yeah, had a good chat with Dan and everything. So really good, but lovely peaceful spot here. But yeah, the graphics on the van, so pleased with that. My intention was to fill the white space on the sides at the back because it just looked like they were missing something. Um, and also the back of the van, I thought the old graphics were strange. They weren't symmetrical and they weren't even lined up properly and things like that. So I wanted to refresh them, shall we say, but in an ode to the originality of the whole graphics and everything around the van. And yes, the big black space is gonna be for more flag stickers. In fact, I'm gonna repopulate the black space with the flags of the countries we've been to already. Today, I'm off up to Birmingham. I'm gonna see Rob pack the van and go. And um, he's got, um, I think it's number three van refit now and it is just the thing and i always always said this your van is never finished every time you go out for a long trip you always come back and go if i could just do that or if i could just had that or if i had more of this or less of that or if i just had a little bit more space there you just you always, i mean i've done it changed this van and it had it in my head 
even when we got up to sort of like Sweden, I'm thinking now, all right, I need more lights on the front. Um, I need more battery power because the solar's not doing well. Blah, blah, blah. He's got some electrical questions. So I figured kind of passing, mate, I'll pop in and um, yeah, help him out. So that's where I'm off to now, Birmingham. And then um, see where we get to then. I can't believe it. I just found LPG. I've been all over the place lately and really struggled to find LPG. Every place was just out of it, temporarily out of order, couldn't get stock. Apparently something to do with a driver shortage or something like that. So uh, yeah, I've just uh, been visiting Rob uh, near Birmingham and he says, oh yeah, the guy down the corner from me, he's got it. So nip down there. Yay, I've got LPG. It means I can do like baked potatoes or something now in the oven. I probably won't. I'll probably still do pizza or toasties, but I could do baked potatoes, more importantly. So the next little bits of upgrades, we'll put some fast charge USB in, because although this light rail had the USB adapters in, um, it was only USB 1.1. Upgrade to this little light as well. It's a dimmable light, easy switch on and off, just touch. And then like I say, you've got a bit of dim control as well, because the light that was on there, you had to twist around and mess around and one of them actually broke off. So, well, these are pretty cool, these little um, 12 volt rails. Um, and they don't seem to be that durable. Like I say, we've got this one for the little uh, dome security camera. And that is the third one we've used now. Basically the little contacts there start to deteriorate. And then we move on to a couple of lights. So this area of the van is always quite dark. And the only lighting really is from under there. So it doesn't really give you much lighting at night seeing these cupboards and that. So again, gone for touch with dimmable as well. And to be fair, even on the dimmest setting, it's still quite bright. And then you've got a, a night light mode, kind of a blue light. So that one's there. And then this one is for the bedroom. It's exactly the same. So as well as the lights and the USBs, um, obviously I made those alterations over the front um, and that's made it a lot more quieter going down the motorway. That's worked quite well. Um, and the other insulation that I put down the sides of the pillars and then the floor, um, that's really helped as well with not only sound deadening driving down the road, um, but at night time, it's been still quite cold over the last few days, even though it's been warm during the day. And that's helped at night as well with that. And speaking of heating, We've also changed the outlets to these. They're kind of like the Chinese diesel heater outlets where you can rotate them. And just to get the heating that used to come out straight onto the floor, to get it off the floor and into the van. Um, just because I don't know if you know, but um, our floor, the top layer has delaminated. So the, the vinyl bit is delaminated. Um, Bursna will repair it free of charge, but they want the van for a month or two which would make me homeless. <laughs> so unless Bursner are watching this and you're gonna give me a van for a couple of months to bumble around in, bumble around in, eh? Um, then yeah, I'm just gonna to have to live with it, unfortunately. And those little vents there that I put in that cupboard where the diesel heater is, that's worked tremendously well. They're getting more air into the cupboard where the heater is, which results in a better um, output airflow and everything as well there. Um, if you're wondering what that little bar is there and the two bits at the top, there's a bike carrier that fits on the back there. Um, I don't trust people not to pinch the My Rider, so uh, that's why we store them inside. And I took the bike carrier off because it weighed about 15, 16 kilos. Um, but yeah, I designed these graphics and um, got them put on a couple of days ago and uh, really happy with them. And then inside is the spare. So yeah, that's the old one. Perfectly okay. Um, both tyres at the front were even wear, so there's no issues with tracking or anything like that. And there's still about three or four mil left on that one, uh, which does mean that obviously it's a good spare. Um, so I've got a, a rim as well. And Mandy came the other day just to uh, get a fridge sorted out. That stopped working. Um, and to check over a diesel heater. I also did a few other jobs as well, but uh, you can find out all about that in Mandy's video. So I figured this was a good spot to uh, finish this vlog. Um, spent a couple of days with Mandy, not ideal circumstances, it was a diesel heater and fridge that were um, causing issues, um, so yeah, I've been able to sort those out, making a few other adjustments to the van as well, get it all uh, going again for her, and um, yeah, 
finished doing all the mods on um, on our van there, my van. Still not get used to that, my van. Let's go with that for now. So yeah, really happy with that. Almost everything done, certainly enough things for now anyway and the other stuff I'll work on in the future. Thanks for all the comments again. It's really nice having all your guys' support and everything for what's going on at the moment. All right guys, have a good one, take care. See you in the next one, bye. Thank you.